Halfway. It's hard to believe we're almost halfway through the college football season, but numerous teams are playing game six of 12 this week here, this Saturday, October the 5th. I'm going to break down the two biggest matchups, at least from a top 25 perspective, top 30 to be exact, but then give you nine bonus games as well. All the other top 15 teams playing this Saturday. It's a deep dive here from my top 25 report for this Saturday in college football. Hi, I'm Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And as I do every week, I do this top 25 video, and the premise is simple. When two top 25 teams are playing, I give you a deep dive preview. We normally have three to four games each Saturday here on the channel. Of course, weeks two and three early in the non-conference slate, sometimes light, but we actually had some really good matchups here in recent weeks. So I was surprised to see week six is the weakest top 25 card of the season. In fact, there's only one official top 25 matchup, but I'm going to make it up for you. I'm going to actually go deeper into more games than ever here on this video, and you'll see why in just a moment. 11 games in depth. Rapid fire coming up with my game simulation, my proprietary 10,000 game simulation ratings for all 11 games. I've never done this before. I'm going to give all that to you free here on this video. But first, let's talk about the one true top 25 matchup, and even this one barely qualified. In fact, Texas A&M and UNLV are tied right now for number 25 in votes. So one last vote, and there would have been no top 25 head-to-head matchups. But we do get one this Saturday, early at 12 noon Eastern on ABC. Number 9, Missouri, traveling to number 25, Texas A&M. And I think after this week, A&M will be ranked even higher. I do like the Aggies here. Now, my 10,000-game simulation has, on average, A&M winning this game by three points. They are currently just a two-point favorite. So, yeah, we're getting a little bit of line value. But three is a key number. So when I think it should be three and it's only two, that's more than just a normal point with a bigger point spread. But I like the matchup here, and I like the situational setup, especially for Texas A&M. A more I dislike it for Missouri would be a more accurate statement. Let's look at it first of all. Missouri has not traveled all season. Four straight home games, four straight home wins to start. They were a two-touchdown favorite or more, double-digit favorite in all four of those games. Uh, So say they've played a pretty weak schedule so far would be an understatement. And as an 18-point favorite, they barely beat Vanderbilt 30-27. to They did get the bye week, so the scheduling spot helps there. But once again, first time they traveled all season, and now it's October. Not a good sign, and this is historically not a good situation either for college football teams. Meanwhile, Texas A&M started off with that loss against Notre Dame, but they've gone a perfect 4-0 straight up since, playing excellent football as they head into Game 6, and their running game has really gotten going. They've had over 200 rushing yards in three of their past four outings, and I think that will be the difference here, the line of scrimmage advantage of four Texas A&M in this game on Saturday. And once again, I favor them by three. I know the line's two, not a ton of line value, but it's enough, especially on a key number and also the situational and statistical matchup. I like A&M here at minus two at noon Eastern. Now that's your only top 25 video. Bye, see you next week. No, I don't do it that way. You know that. And that's why I love the support here on Wager Talk TV. I'm going to give you a top 30 game, number 30, Iowa against Ohio State, but I'm also going to give you in a moment My game simulation for all the other top 15 teams playing on Saturday. That's 11 more games. Rapid fire. We're going to get it done fast. And by the way, comment below. Let me know if you like this format. I'm not going to promise to do it every week. It's a lot. Um, But many of you have said you'd like a deeper dive. And I know many of you asked for my simulations. And by the way, I know some of you were asking last week. I didn't get back to you before kickoff. But whenever you want a simulation and you have a question, I will try to pull it up for you and reply in the comments below. Because I do honestly read all the comments and I reply back. Sometimes I don't see them until after kickoff, but I do read all the comments and reply back. So I'm going to give you my simulation on all the other big games for Saturday here in just a moment. But let's look at one game that was just a bit outside for making the cut, and that's number 30 Iowa against number 3 Ohio State. And that game goes at 3.30 Eastern Saturday afternoon on CBS. And no, Iowa's not going to be ranked next week because they'd have to pull the big upset as an 18.5 point dog. And I don't think they do it. In fact, I don't even think they cover My game simulation, my 10,000 game simulation, has Ohio State winning by over 23 points on average in this contest. So I do think there's some value with the Buckeyes at minus 18.5. And And let's dive a little bit deeper into the matchup here. You know, on the surface, when you get an Iowa team that's allowing just about 14 points a game, getting uh, getting 18.5 points, you'd say, well, that's a live dog. And yes, they are a good defensive dog. The problem is, Their offense is still not solved. They have a great rushing attack this year, six yards per carry. So their offense has improved, 32 points a game. Huge improvement based on the last few seasons. 
The problem is they still can't throw the ball. And they've been getting away with it because they haven't had to play from behind. Now they will be playing from behind almost certainly probably early in the game. And they're averaging on the season just 5.7 yards per pass against teams that allow 6.2. To put that in perspective, Ohio State gives up just 5.5 and they average 9.5. So yeah, Iowa might be able to run the ball early and keep it close. But when they get behind, they're going to have to throw. And by the way, they might not even be able to run the ball early. Ohio State's given up just two yards per carry. Really strong defensive team. Very underrated defensive team this season. Giving up just 6.8 points per game. Don't overthink this one. When Iowa gets behind, they're not going to be able to catch up. And Ohio State will roll here. I actually favor Ohio State by 23.5. And and the line is only 18.5. So I like the Buckeyes in this game at 3.30 Eastern. Now those are your two top 30 matchups. Nothing else was even a top 30 matchup. It's amazing I don't want to say bad. There's some good games this week, and there's some great money-making opportunities, but there's no high-profile games like Georgia, Alabama last week. By the way, I gave you Bama in this video, gave you Bama in a standalone video, told you my simulation favored them by six. They won by seven. The week before, I told you Michigan by three in my simulation over USC. Everybody hated that pick. They won by exactly three. So yeah, this proprietary database model I've developed over the years does quite well. I'm going to give you my simulation for 11 other games in the top 15 for this Saturday coming up. In just a moment, rapid fire, buckle in, get ready. But first, if you want my official best bets, look, the games I'm giving you here in the video are games I'm considering. I'm giving you which way I lean based on my math model, but it takes a lot more to make a game an official best bet for this Saturday and also Sunday NFL. And I'm very selective, and selectivity pays off big time. In fact, coming into this season, I was number one the last two seasons combined in college and pro football ATS profit at Wager Talk. And I'm doing it again this year. We entered this week on a 20 and 11 regular season record, number one college and pro combined this year in football. And it's not a surprise after going five and one last week, 10 and four the two weeks before that. Now in a current 15 and five, 75% football run heading into this weekend. So yeah, we're actually getting hotter and adding on to that number one ranking. Not just football. Baseball regular season finished 31 and 13 run as we head into the playoffs, which started this week. And the NBA regular season just a couple weeks away. Oh, yeah, number one all time in units one in the NBA in the history of wagertalk.com. So I know we're talking football, just college here in this video. Don't forget about my NFL Fade the Public video. It'll be up this weekend. But don't sleep on baseball and basketball as well. Now, if you're football only, I get it. Many of you are football only clients. Nothing wrong with that. You'll still make money. And if you'd like to try a 30 day football sampler, we do have a special price this weekend, just $199 with promo code FBALL30. Once again, college and pro football, every play I've released for the next 30 days and nights for just $199. My number one ranked football best bets this season with promo code FBALL30. Now, if you're serious about making money, you should play every sport every day. That's my personal opinion, and that's what I do. Um, Seven-day sampler is available for all sports this weekend only. Seven days for just $77. That's a great offer. No promo code needed, by the way. Seven days for $77. Great way to try out my best bets. But I know many of you have been with me before. You've been following me for a while. Now is the time to take a serious investment approach. Baseball playoffs are here. Football is in mid-swing. Basketball about to start. Lock in a full year, 365 days and nights of all sports for just over $3 a day, just about a dollar a play with promo code SM365. Now, I've offered that for three weeks, and I keep bringing it back every week. I keep thinking I'm going to cut it off, lock in whoever signed up, but... So many of you have enjoyed that promo. I've heard from so many of you that are doing quite well already with it. But more importantly, I know some of you have sat back on the sideline and watched winter after winter pass you by. I know you're kicking yourself. After the 10-4 and four weekend, two weekends, you're like, well, you can't win again. Went 5-1 and one last weekend in football. Now 15-5. and five. Baseball regular season finished 31-13. and 13. NBA about to start number one all time, including number one the last three years combined in the NBA at Wager Talk. So don't overthink it. The reason you do a full year is because you set it and forget it. It takes five minutes a day. You get the plays. They're emailed directly to you. And then you log in. You put the bets in. You make the money. What is it? 38 states now are online with legal sports betting. I know many of you are international viewers as well can play. This is a form of investment. That's how I look at it. That's how my sharp, intelligent clients look at it. And the cost of entry has never been lower. $3 a day, a dollar play. Promo code SM365. Instant $800 discount. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with the shortcut you see on your screen, wt.buzz slash sm. All right, I've revved up the engine enough. Let's rapid fire here on the way out. There's no other top 30 head-to-head matchups, but I'm going to give you 11 bonus games here. These are all the other top 15 teams playing this Saturday. I'll go down in ranking order. I'm going to tell you my simulation and compared to the real number and also give you maybe a couple quick tidbits. I don't want to drag this out too long, but rapid fire. Once again, if you're finding it useful, 
please comment below and let me know, yay or nay, what you like, and I will fine-tune this video for you, the viewer, because this is for you. I don't do this unless people watch. It's not worth my time. But thousands and thousands of views and comments below, I do it. And don't forget to smash that like button, the thumbs up also goes a great way to keeping all this content free here on Wager Talk TV. All right, let's start with Alabama. Number one ranked Alabama at Vanderbilt. Uh, currently, Bama is a 23-point road favorite. It's obviously a huge potential letdown spot for Bama. Uh, and I do think Vanderbilt has some backdoor cover potential with a revamped offense. It's putting up over 37 points a game. By the way, I did a deep dive video. It's a five-minute standalone video on this game. So if you want more details, check it out here on Wager Talk TV. But as I mentioned in that video, I actually like the over 54 and a half. The reason being is I do think Vandy can move the ball late in the game and maybe get some garbage points. And normally I would maybe lean towards Vandy for that reason as a uh, ugly underdog, especially with Alabama not focused. The problem, though, is my simulation favors Alabama by 26. So once again, simulation favors Alabama by 26. The line is currently just 23. So that'll keep me off the side. But I do think the over 54 and a half is worth a look. All right, number four, Tennessee at Arkansas. Uh, my simulation favors Tennessee by 9.8, less than 10 points on average, and they are a 13.5 point favorite. So not a surprise, the line is now inflated on Tennessee, and that's something we figured we see at some point as they've been routing teams. Of course, a few weeks ago, I had a best bet on Tennessee and Miami of Florida, who's coming up in a moment, and I won by combined 133 nothing a couple weeks ago. So I'm not afraid to lay big numbers with teams like Tennessee, but the value is not there this week as my simulation only favors them by less than 10 points, and they're currently a 13.5 point favorite. Now, if you are going to play Tennessee, you want to look at them in the first half. Uh, Josh Heupel in Tennessee has been the best first half moneymaker in college football the last few seasons, over 70% on the blind first half, and they are minus seven first half. Um, if you like Arkansas, I would wait and try to find a plus 14, as this is a late kickoff at 7.30 Eastern. But once again, the line does look inflated based on my ratings. All right, number five, Georgia. Do they bounce back after the loss to Alabama? Well, they're taking on Auburn. An Auburn team, I think, is better than their two and three straight up record. In fact, I believe, um, what was it, eight turnovers to one in those two losses, including that 5-0 turnover deficit against Cal, 3-1 turnover deficit more recently. This is a team that could very easily be 5-0. and um, I am looking to play on Auburn in the right spot in the future. Uh, the problem is this isn't the spot based on line value. In fact, my database simulation has Georgia winning by over 28 points on average, and they're currently just a 22-point favorite. So one of the rare situations where you can make a case the line is probably too cheap on Georgia, but after that slow start against Alabama being down 28-3 and then barely beating Kentucky, which looked really bad a few weeks ago, uh, the line is short now. How does Georgia respond? With this new playoff format, one loss does not do you in, especially with the championship game still coming up. And I think Georgia knows that, so I look for them to come out full throttle. Um, so while I think Auburn is better than their 2-3 and three record, probably not the week to trust them here. My simulation favors Georgia by 28, and they're currently just a 22-point favorite. All right, we're going to keep it rolling. Penn State, number 7, Penn State at home against UCLA. Early kickoff, noon Eastern. And once again, I did a deep dive video on this game um, here on Wager Talk TV. Also earlier this week on Tuesday, Wager Talk Today. And don't forget, Tuesdays are now Trash Talk Tuesday on Wager Talk Today. Me and the Prez bring on different guests and we have some fun. So it's a light day. You know, Tuesday's kind of the day off, right? Because Monday night football's over. No one's really gearing up for the weekend yet. So Trash Talk Tuesday is going to be a fun episode going forward. Um, but I did do a big game breakdown, which is also clipped here as a solo video on Wager Talk TV. And I like Penn State in this game. At the time, it was mostly minus 28. But there are a lot of 27 and a halves out there now. And I didn't have my database models finished. It takes several days to run 10,000 games through the simulation for every game on the board. Um, but I liked the setup for Penn State. And I was pretty sure my model would favor them. Well, first time here on Wager Talk TV, I'll give you my model. It was Penn State by 32. So I do like Penn State a little bit more now, too, to see we get some nice line value. Uh, I favored Penn State by 32. Really tough scheduling spot for UCLA. They played the 11 o'clock Eastern late night game last week at home against Oregon, and now they travel cross-country and play a 9 a.m. Pacific time kickoff against Penn State. And Franklin and company, they love to run the score up and cover point spreads. I think they'll be able to do so here at 28 or less. I think Penn State's worth a look. I favor them by 32. All right, number eight, Miami of Florida at California. Talk about a crazy, uh, not a late night, it was the Friday night, like 7.30 Eastern game, but it went a little late because it took almost 10 minutes to review the final call. Didn't affect the point spread, but uh, money line betters were affected. Hey, chime in below. Did you have a money line play on that Virginia Tech Miami of Florida game last week? If you did, let me know how the outcome was for you, good or bad. Maybe it was tied up in a parlay. I think most likely a, par a lot of people probably had those big 314 money line parlays with Miami as a big favorite. 
Um, and they overturned the touchdown. Miami of Florida escaped. They remained 5-0 and straight up. And now they're at California. Um, and I do think the line's a bit inflated. My ratings favor Miami by just 9.5 points on average. And uh, the current line is 10.5. Now, it's just a one-point difference. But 10 is a very key number. About a 3 to 4% chance Miami would win by exactly 10 on the road. So um, there is some line value with Cal here. Just a point, though. Not a huge difference. But once again, doesn't look like a good scheduling spot for Miami of Florida. This is a team that has not played a road game outside the state of Florida all season. They've had two road games, but they were Florida and South Florida. Now they're traveling cross-country. In fact, it's the first time they've played a regular season game on the West Coast since the 2000 game against the Washington Huskies, which caught the cost them a chance at the national championship. My friend Mark Rogers and I, the voice of college football, he has a great channel. I do some video breakdowns with him every week. Uh, Mark Rogers pointed out this is the first time they've traveled since the 2000 season to the West Coast. So it's a really unique situation, and the line looks a little inflated on top of that. By the way, had Miami won that game at Washington that year, they probably play Oklahoma in the title game in Miami instead of Florida State. I was at that game. And it was a miserable national title game. What was it? 14-2, 10-2. Florida State was favored, and they only had a safety. I think I saw Jamal Holloway at halftime in the concourse level, in the uh, the club level, getting a mixed drink. All the uh, 70-year-old Oklahoma alums are drooling over him and buying him drinks. That's all I remember from that night. Got a little blurry afterwards. But seriously, terrible national championship game. I was there. Miami would have been there otherwise with me. And actually, I would not have been there because I went with Florida State alums. So I wouldn't have been at the game had Miami beaten Washington. Anyway, I digress. I said I was going to do rapid fire here. Now we're going back 24 years. Seriously, though, this is an interesting matchup, a difficult scheduling spot. We'll see how it plays out. I favor Miami by just nine and a half. Hey, we got, let's see, four games remaining. If you're liking this rapid fire, I'm kind of liking it, man. I'm doing better than I thought. I don't have any notes here at all. I'm just running this stuff off the top of my head. I did some standalone videos, like I said, for the Alabama and Penn State games. So I already have that stuff memorized, but... Hey, look, we're halfway through the college football season. I've been looking at this stuff for hours and hours every day and night for over a month. These teams are ingrained in me. They're ingrained in the simulation as well. So let's see how that simulation does. Because I know many of you have asked for other games throughout the week, especially these top 25. So I figured this would be a cool way to give you a little extra value since it was such a light top 25 card. So once again, if you're liking it, comment below. Let me know what format you like. Do you want me to do a deep dive every week like I usually do on just three or four games? or more rapid fire like this on multiple games with my ratings. I kind of have a feeling what you all are going to like, but I want to hear it from you first. So comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. And also be sure to thumbs up, like this video, as that is always helpful. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do subscribe to Wager Talk TV and click that bell as well. So you get an instant alert when this video goes up, top 25 video, and also my NFL Fade the Public video goes up this weekend. Click that bell for an instant alert when you subscribe here to Wager Talk TV. All right, next game is interesting. Number 10, Michigan at Washington. Rematch of the national championship last year. And boy, was that an easy winner for my clients. One of the many best bet winners I had. The last two seasons, I mentioned number one ranked in ATS profit in the uh, college and pro football combined. Last year, we had Michigan over Washington. The year before, we had Georgia over TCU. What a blowout easy winner that was. Michigan was pretty close. Both Washington and TCU were not the second best teams in the country, and we took advantage so the question becomes, is there really revenge here for Washington? Hardly nobody's on the roster. New coach, a new coach from Michigan as well. Hardly anybody's on that roster. 13 of them are in the NFL now. Um, but I do think it's a meaningful game for Washington. And that's important because the loss to Rutgers last Friday night could really leave this team flat in the normal spot, being their second loss of the season. But I think the fact that Michigan's coming to town will get them focused here. And we do get some line value. Uh, my simulation favors Washington by five and a half points. And the current line is... One and a half to two is actually two and a half this afternoon. As I'm doing this video on Thursday, it has already dropped down to two, even one and a half on the Wager Talk Live odd screen. So line is dropping. We'll dig a little bit deeper into why. I'll make sure there's no injury or something. But once again, uh, my simulation favors Washington by five and a half in this national title rematch. And it's also the first time, mentioned this with Miami of Florida a moment ago, it's the first true road game, first road game of the season for Michigan and a unique traveling spot all the way to the West Coast there. This New conference realignment, both Big Ten and Big 12, has led to some really crazy scheduling spots I think we can take advantage of. You know, a couple weeks ago, I gave that standalone late-night video here for you on Kansas State-BYU, and I mentioned the thin air and altitude, weird trip to Provo. K-State was a touchdown favorite and lost outright 31-9. So something to keep an eye on this year more than ever are these unique traveling spots. And we have one with Miami going to Cal and Michigan going to Washington. And in both spots, my simulation does favor uh, the home teams uh, with some line value. All right, here's another unique scheduling spot. Number 11, USC at Minnesota. And um, I only favor USC by five in my simulation. The current line is seven and a half to eight. Eight in a lot of spots. Some sharper books are seven and a half. 
And I do agree with that sharp lean on Minnesota. As once again, I only favor USC by five. Not sold on this USC defense still. You know, everyone thought they were much improved after the LSU show. And it was a good show in an opening weekend against LSU. But it's a USC team that's still giving up some yards this year. And I think they're a very mediocre D still. Now, Minnesota, nothing special offensively. But it's a weird scheduling spot once again. USC traveling to Minneapolis. So... Um, another strange scheduling spot, and we do get some line value once again based with the home team, at least according to my simulation. All right, two more games to go here in the top 15 on Saturday, October the 5th. Number 12, Ole Miss at South Carolina. Uh, very similar theme once again here. Um, I think the line is inflated. In fact, my simulation favors Ole Miss by just four and a half points, and South Carolina is currently a nine-point home underdog. Ole Miss also coming off a loss. you got to wonder their mindset here. And, hey, South Carolina's 31-6 win at Kentucky, looking pretty damn impressive now that Kentucky almost beat Georgia and looked decent last week as well. So South Carolina, a little bit of a play on team for me this year, and that's uh, my simulation feels that way as well. Uh, favors Ole Miss by only 4.4 points. Uh, yet they're laying nine. So there's some line value here again with the home dog. A lot of home dogs this week, and my simulation is favoring most of them. And don't think that's always the case because uh, a lot of times we favor favorites. In fact, most of my best bets, my 11-5 and five number one ranked college football start this year at Wager Talk has been big favorites. And uh, the simulation usually backs it up. It favors Ohio State and Penn State. But when we get to more competitive prices like this, it often favors competitive dogs. Uh, we saw that with Michigan a few weeks ago, and we saw that with Alabama last week, which was also a strong best bet for my clients at wagertalk.com. All right, last game of the top 15. I wanted to include this one. I was going to cut it off at the top 10, but I saw some value with you know the USC Ole Miss, and this game is fun to talk about. Number 15, Clemson at Florida State. Look ahead line earlier this season was Florida State minus 4, and now Florida State is plus 15. Wow, 19-point difference. And i got to get your comments on this game. Comment below, do you think this is an over-adjustment or can you just not trust Florida State? And hey, look, I get it. Hard to trust Florida State. This was the top 10 team when the season began. Back-to-back, double-digit favorite, outright losses. Got blown out last week. But here's the thing. If there's one game they might get up for as a 1-4 team, you got to figure it's maybe the Clemson game. They're not going to go bowling. They probably won't even be bowl eligible. Even if they are, they're going to probably turn it down. And this is their bowl game. We talk a lot about rival dogs in November. And one of the reasons it works is because we get inflated lines and it's usually their bowl game. It's a focused spot. If Florida State's going to give an effort, and that's a big if, I get it. It should be this week at home against a highly ranked Clemson team, ranked number 15 in the nation in the ACC uh, contender to be the champ again this year. And Florida State thought they had a good shot. So I do look for Florida State to bring it. I still think the athletic talent there is very comparable to Clemson's. And we get line value. That's the other key here. I like the situation, but we also get value. Um, my simulation favors Clemson on average by just 10.5. Once again, 10,000 games simulated through my proprietary model. On average, Clemson wins by 10.5, and, and we're getting 15. So the line is inflated now based on recent results, as we figured it probably would be. It's been that case with some other games, but now the question becomes, is this the game maybe Florida State plays hard? because they have a real opponent they're facing. Hey, comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this game. The other games, I just ran through 11 other games I gave you here. 13 in all in this video. You know, it's crazy. It's the lightest top 25 video of the season with just one true top 25 matchup, and I still found a way to give you 13 games. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please comment below and let me know. And also let me know what format you like better, just a deep dive into three or four highly ranked games or quick hitters on 10 or 11 games. Even this quick hitter dragged out a little bit because I just got so much information I want to give you here on Wager Talk TV. Hey, seriously, comment below. I read the comments. I reply back. I do appreciate the input. And I you know, switch the videos up to give you what you want because that's the whole key here is you, the viewer. Thumbs up like. If you haven't done it already, do it. Boom. Thumbs up like. Let's break that record for smashing that thumbs up like in this video. And don't forget, subscribe and click that bell for instant alerts. When this video, my NFL fade the public, and also the weekly, the free videos throughout the week for baseball, basketball, and football, go live here on the channel. And if you like my personal best bets, if you want to kind of decipher deeper what I just gave you, some of these games might be best bets. You know, this is kind of a short list of what I'm looking at each and every week, some of these high-profile games. But if you want my official plays, the exact same games I am personally using. This is my 29th year as a full-time professional handicapper. You get the exact same games I am personally using each and every day when you're a direct client. And go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And while you're there, check out the specials and promo codes. You don't have to memorize them. They're on my page right now. You can get a seven-day all sports for just 77. No promo code needed. That's pretty simple. Or you can get the 30-day football only package for $199 with promo code FBALL30. 
or the best offer. I'll bring it back another week because I just want everybody on board. SM365, the full one-year all-access, all-sports subscription for just over $3 a day, just over a dollar a play because you get over an $800 instant discount with promo code SM365 at checkout. You don't have to memorize the promo codes or the special offers. They're on my page right now, right below the daily best bets and also the free play. I put a free play up almost each and every day of the week. So check out the daily free play and analysis. And right below that, you will see the promo codes and special offers for this weekend. No matter which one you choose, get on board. Don't sit on the sideline any longer. Number one this season, college and pro football combined, including 15 and five the last three weeks. Finished baseball regular season on a 31 and 13 run. We've got some playoff best bets lined up over the next few weeks into the World Series. And don't look now, but the NBA starts in a couple weeks. I'm number one all time in profit one in the NBA at wagertalk.com. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and you can get there quicker with the shortcut you see on your screen, wt.buzz slash sm. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on social media as well on X and Instagram at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. Stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some great free sports betting content. More of it coming up next.